The eye is an amazing thing. It can be used to see our world, filled with beautiful things like mountains, skies, and Chris Hemsworth. While this video may not be as glorious as that jawline, we hope to skim over some of the visual information learned in class before focusing on other, more interesting material. No offense, McAuliffe. The purpose of vision is not exactly just to tell our brains about what is around us in the world, but more to create useful representations that help us survive. For example, there is a broad spectrum of light frequencies in our environment, but humans have evolved to only see between 350 and 700 nanometers, called the visible light spectrum. But how exactly does this work? When light enters the eye, it hits the back of the eye first and is processed by photoreceptor cells called rods and cones. Rods are cells that focus on black and white processing, while cones primarily deal with the color spectrum and can process different shades of blue, green, and red. Next, the light information is transmitted into bipolar and horizontal cells that by a series of complex processes we learned in class called lateral inhibition, communicate information about the edges of things to our brain. Why is this important? Remember that vision is about creating useful representations, and edges of objects in nature must be accentuated to help us with object recognition. From bipolar and horizontal cells, the signals then travel to ganglion cells, which are cells that can be either inhibitory or excitatory, as we mentioned in class. The ganglion cells are the frontmost part of the back layers of our eye, and need a place for signals to exit into the brain. This occurs in the optic chiasm, and creates something known as a blind spot. In fact, our visual domain is rather restricted to only clearly see things in the center of our vision. As the chart shows, if you look straight ahead, everything in your periphery is unclear, and there's even a place where you don't see anything at all, the blind spot. Many of us don't even know that we have a blind spot, because our brain fills in the visual area with surrounding colors and shapes. From the eye, the light signal travels through neurons to the thalamus, or more specifically, the lateral geniculate nucleus, also called the LGN, and then crosses into a part of your brain called V1. V1 is part of the occipital lobe, or one of the four major brain areas, which is considered to be the part of your brain that works with vision. While all visual information gathers in the back of the brain in the occipital lobe, different forms of visual information then go to different areas in order to be processed. Specifically, there's two pathways for vision, the ventral stream that travels along the bottom and the dorsal stream that goes towards the top of the brain. Why would we need to separate visual information? Well, our brain uses the dorsal stream to process information regarding where something is and how we should interact with it. Meanwhile, the ventral stream is used to process what something is and helps with identification of objects. You may be wondering, what happens to a person if something goes wrong with either the ventral or the dorsal stream? Well, two medical conditions can arise from lesions in these streams. Aperceptive agnosia if there is an issue with the ventral stream, or optic ataxia if problems occur in the dorsal stream. Aperceptive agnosia is a condition where the patient has issues with object recognition. For example, if a patient holds up some keys, they may know that they are holding some sort of object that is kind of sharp and shiny, but they would not know what the object is used for or what it's called. Interestingly, if allowed to trace over the object with their fingers, patients can sometimes recognize the keys because they use their tactile or touch system to compensate for the issues with their ventral stream and their vision. A famous cognitive example of a patient with apperceptive agnosia is patient DF, who struggled with recognition due to carbon monoxide poisoning, but was able to draw the objects from memory. Meanwhile, optic ataxia is what happens when there's damage to the dorsal stream of vision. In this case, patients can recognize the keys from before, but when they reach to pick them up, they are unable to grasp them properly. It is almost like if a person with regular vision tried to pick up something in a very dark and unfamiliar room. This difficulty of interaction with objects is very debilitating in everyday life, and patients with optic ataxia often need assistance with tasks that others may consider very simple and ordinary. Even people who don't have damage to their visual systems are not always capable of generating accurate information about their environments. Remember we mentioned that our brain emphasizes borders and edges more, a phenomenon that can be understood through this picture where the edges look far more emphasized than the colors in between, known as an optical illusion. There are other optical illusions that our eyes experience as well. Most famous are the Ebbinghaus and Ponzo illusions that utilize our brain's natural instinct to compare objects with their environment. 
While these circles are the same size, their surroundings create the perception that one is bigger than the other. Similarly, these bars are the same length, but again, our eyes don't perceive that to be true. Another example of an optical illusion is the Kinesa Triangle. When we look at this picture, our eyes fill in the shapes to see a triangle that isn't really there. The reason for this is that in nature, it's a lot more beneficial for us to recognize shapes like the triangle than for us to look at this and see three weird Pac-Man things. To wrap things up, our visual system is very complicated and yet it is one of the parts of the body that we understand the most about. From regular vision to disorders within the ventral and dorsal streams and optical illusions, this has been a very brief overview of the system that allows us not to see not only Chris Hemsworth, but all the other Chris's as well.